Yes, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Sava here from Football Heritage TV. As the transfer window is ticking and talking and the time is slowly ebbing away, are we finally starting to see Spurs realise that they need to do a lot of work and start to make attempts to build a stronger team? Well, I don't know. Are we? Are we not? Lots of rumours. I wanted to talk today about a couple of things that seem to be completely missed by a large majority of the fan base and a large majority of football fans. I hear all the time that if Spurs get a winger and a forward, it catapults us to challenging the big clubs and it will revolutionise our forward line. And I'm not doubting that. I don't quite know that Neto and, and Solanke, for example, revolutionise the forward line, but, but granted, they do make it stronger. Um, we won't go into those two today, but my concern, and I'm starting to see a lot of people now, I'm starting to see a lot of pundits talk about this, a lot of other YouTube commentators that aren't Spurs fans are talking about this, and it feels like the only people that are in denial about the point I'm going to talk about is the people who are fully, I back Ange, I back him 100%, I, I have no mind of my own, Ange doesn't want it, so I don't want it, Ange doesn't need it, so I don't need it, and of course, I'm talking about the number six. I'm talking about a need for Tottenham and a need for clubs in this modern day era to play with, I hate the term number six, but that's what we're calling it these days. Whether it's a number six, the defensive midfielder position, the furthest midfielder back, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to look at that today and have a look at what does this mean for a club with a number six in possession, a number six out of possession. And also, let's have a look at the clubs that have been successful over the last decade or so. And I want to explore when people are telling me, well, Ange Ball, which is made up, by the way, I don't know what it is. Ange Ball, he doesn't need a number six. I don't believe it. The evidence is showing that this is a lie. You know, he can keep saying it. Fans can keep saying he doesn't play like that. He might not play like that, but I'm going to show today why you have to have one like that. And if you don't, you're going to be overrun. And when you look at the number of chances Spurs concede in a game, the number of attacks teams have against us, um, the number of transitions, the number of turnovers, it all stems from the fact that Spurs aren't very good at keeping hold of the football in the midfield, but yet people will tell you we've got a great midfield. And it all stems from the fact that there isn't that first line of protection in front of the back four, or in Spurs' case, because of the crazy notion that you can play two inverted fullbacks at once, protecting the back two. Now, I'm just going to try and go through this holistically because lots of people will have their own determination of what is a defensive midfielder, what is a number six. And of course, there are a number of different ways that this position can be played. I'm not saying there is a one size fits all, but most clubs have one. They might do slightly different jobs, but most clubs will have that number six. If he's not an out-and-out out number six, I'm not going to get drawn into, but he plays an eight and sometimes they're someone that sits and protects and starts playoff, right? Now, the first thing I would say is that a number six or a defensive midfielder used to be defined as a defensive operator, so to speak. Somebody that is defensive-minded, that's their first an only goal, they're there to break up play, kick people, tackle, give it to someone else. That position is slightly revolutionised, and I say slightly, massively revolutionised and, and adapted over the last decade or so. I'm not saying it wasn't around before, but we've seen the involvement of football in that time. And I'll give an example of that. And, and the first two players I'll give an example of is you've got, if, if we look at two players at the, in the Premier League last year, one of which has now moved on to Bayern Munich, you've got a Paulinho, who was the furthest midfielder back for Fulham, more of a destroyer, more of a, of, of, of a tackle at whatever cost, more of a win the ball, give it to somebody else in front of him. Nothing wrong with that. That was him. Then you look at the best player in the world at this position, who's also in the Premier League for Man City, you look at Rodri. And Rodri is more of your elegant, quarterback um, type um, deep line playmaker, always in the right position, that type of player. And he does start play. He does dictate play from deep. So there's different types of players, but every club has one. 
Now, a, a list of names I'm going to put out. And again, use the number six loosely because some of these players didn't play in a, in a, in a three-man midfield or a two-man pivot. So there's different formations, but players that played in that deep line role that could dictate games, that wanted to get on the ball. Just a few names that I'm putting out there would be a Michael Carrick. Very amazing, superb footballer that gets on the ball, dictated play for Man United for a decade. In a decade when they won Champions Leagues, multiple leagues, FA Cups, League Cups. Rodri, who we just spoke about, for me, is the best at this in the world. For me, he has revolutionised his position. I think he is absolutely superb. He's another one. Then you look at a Thiago Alcantara for Liverpool, for Bayern Munich. Very different. He plays a bit more in a midfield too, rather than the number six and sits. But he's always the deepest player and he wants to take the ball off the back four. He wants to dictate play from in front of his own goal. He wants to get on it, spread play, yeah, slow it down, speed it up. Again, another fantastic footballer that can play that role. You then look at probably the master of this position, Sergio Busquets, who sat in, did this role for the greatest club team we've ever seen. Arguably, people can argue that, but one of the top three greatest club sides we've ever seen was the Barcelona team under Pep Guardiola. They won everything. They formed the whole Spanish team. And Busquets was at the heart of everything. Busquets was a genius, a mastermind in controlling games, manipulating the ball, telling the other te play teammates where to be, always being in space. Declan Rice, to a lesser degree. Declan Rice isn't your number six, so to speak. But Declan Rice, watch how many times he drops deep, gets the ball off the back four. Yeah, wants to dictate the game. Rather than waiting for the ball to come into him, he wants to go and receive the ball off the back four. Right? I'm not putting him in the same level as some of the players I've mentioned, by the way. You then look at a Jorginho, a, a Jorginho of Arsenal and also did it at Chelsea. Again, not saying he's at those levels of a Busquets, but again, there are certain games where Arsenal needs someone that sits in there, protects the back four, dictates play, gives it to the other midfielders. Jorginho is perfect at that. Again, not the quickest, doesn't cover the most ground, but a wonderful footballer in the right type of game. Then you look at the likes of Fernandinho, did it for years for Man City. Fabinho at Liverpool. Fabinho, not so much the creator, not so much the quarterback, but definitely that guy that sat in front of the back, sat in front of the back uh, four, broke down play, got the tackles in, always in the right place, brilliant in the tackle. And then you look at players like Modric, like Cruz, right? Players who got that ball dictated play. We've just witnessed Modric do it year in, year out for the last 15 years. We've watched Cruz do it for forever. We just saw him do it in, in, the, um, in, in the Euros for Germany. So again, what is it that the number six offers? And why do I think that Tottenham need it? Tottenham play a very... I'm, I'm trying to be as polite as possible because it's not a good style for me. But Tottenham play a kamikaze style of football, which on the eye is perceived to be attacking. You see people going, oh, you wanted attacking football, you've got it. Now, first and foremost, when people say that, there is not just two styles of play. There isn't what we saw from Conte and then what we've seen from Ange, and you have to like either or. There are many different styles of play in this gap. And I think most sensible football fans will understand that. Now, if you are going to play a kamikaze style of play, where both fullbacks invert, and I don't know any teams that do this to the level of Posta Coglu doing it, you leave yourself massively exposed. That's not me making it up. We conceded 61 goals last year. A lot of goals. Yet we conceded, what, 15, 16 goals via set pieces. But still a lot of open play goals on the transition, on the counter-attack, where managers have now clocked it. Gary O'Neill came out after the Wolves game and said, we knew what they were going to do. We knew to counter-attack. The Bayern Munich manager said it the other day, company, we know how to set up against Spurs. You're starting to see it more and more and more now that managers know how we play. Now, some people find that exciting. For me, giving the ball away a lot and only having two defenders and praying that every time a club goes forward, they're going to miss a chance, that's not exciting. That might be great for the neutral, but as a Tottenham fan, it's suicidal, it's kamikaze, whatever word you want to put into it. So what does a number six do? What would a number six do in a Tottenham 
set up. First and foremost, people will watch this video and go, yeah, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it's not what Ange does. But the fact that Ange doesn't do it is why Tottenham will never be better than we are. It's why Tottenham will never challenge for trophies. It's why we will not win league titles. Now, people will say, you can't say that categorically. No one can tell me we're going to be anywhere near Man City or Arsenal this year. I don't possibly Liverpool as well. No one can tell me from what we've done that we're going to be. No team that challenges is this wide open. No team that challenges. If you look at the top three last year, how many goals did they concede compared to Tottenham? Arsenal less than half. You know, you've got to, you've really got to shore it up. All of those teams are very strong defensively. Liverpool had a little blip last year, but still conceded, what, 22 goals less than, less than Tottenham Hotspur? So you've got to be defensively strong if you're going to challenge for titles. Now, what does a number six do that would benefit Tottenham? Well, the number six, when you look at it, the deep line play, playmaker brings calmness to the team. A player that always wants to get on the ball is always available for that pass and always in space. And again, I keep using him as a, as a reference point. Watch Rodri play football. When Man City get the ball, Rodri has always found himself in space. That's not luck. That's an art. He's always two, three yards away from the nearest man to him. He always finds a little pocket of space. So when they get the ball, where's Rodri? There he is. He's in open space. That allows that type of player to dictate the tempo of a game. That type of player knows when to speed the game up, when to slow the game down, when his team need a breather, when his team need to attack quickly on a transition. This man allows people to do that. And some of the things I've written down here will be always available to receive the ball, calmness, always in space, dictating the tempo of a game. More importantly, this next point I've written down is always knows what's around them. The best players in the world know what is around them. When they receive the ball, they don't receive the ball, then look around them. They know. Lionel Messi is the master of this. Not a deep line play, playmaker, but Lionel Messi is the master of scanning the pitch. He just scans and scans and scans. As soon as the ball arrives to him, he doesn't even have to look. He knows where the where his teammates are. He knows his next pass. He knows whether he needs to take it on his right or his left to set him up for his next phase of play. And that's what the deep line playmaker is brilliant at doing. Always being in space and knowing what's around them. The versatility of the passing range as well. You watch the likes of Cruz, the likes of Rodri, the likes of Busquets. These players can play the, the short five yard. They can play the 50 yard ball on a sixpence. They know when to switch it up, when to slow it down. They learn that over time. They know that. It's about being versatile. Yeah. Knowing when they can go forward, knowing when to sit, the discipline. Yeah. The intelligence, when to go, when to stay. Yeah. It, it's it's the intelligence of being on the same wavelength as your back four and, and your forward players, knowing everything that's going on around the pitch, knowing that your two fullbacks have gone. So you need to drop knowing that your fullbacks are sat back. I can go forward a little bit here. Knowing when to dribble with the ball out or when to give it and go. All of these things Tottenham lack. No one in our team. I don't care what anyone says. We can all have our favourite players and we can all want to big up the Sars and the Benton Cores and the Basumas and the Lacelsos in midfield and the Greys. And the, but none of them do this. None of them have that as a skill set. And all of those different skills I've put in there all live within that locker of that player. They've all got the ability to do that. If we look at them out of possession as well, and this is where it's really important for Tottenham. Out of possession is really, really important because Tottenham give away a lot of goals on a transition. Watch us in pre-season. The number of times whoever's been in midfield, Skip, Bergvall, Gray, Basuma, um, Saar, it doesn't matter who is in there. We give the ball away a lot. Why? Because none of them have this. None of them have that ability to put their foot on it, slow a game down and say, right, relax. What we do is try and do everything 100 miles per hour, which is fine sometimes in transition. But when you're not, you need to slow the game down. It needs to be a bit calmer. You need to let everybody get set into their positions of where they're going to be for the next phase of play. 
So the things I've written down about out of possession and let me know whether or not any of this resonates with some of you as to what Tottenham need. We need someone who is disciplined that maintains that position. And I've just watched a video from Rodri, by the way, called uh, a, a football masterclass. And Rodri's talking about the number six role and talking about what he's asked to do by Pep. And he talks massively about discipline, maintaining where he should be at all times. Not in one, not standing still, but this is my 30 yards of the pitch where I operate deep. I'm going to maintain my status in there. Now, what Spurs do, we have a lot of players that will drop into there. But when we haven't got the ball, they're nowhere to be seen. They've all gone gung-ho. They've all gone up the pitch and we lose the ball. So when people say, Ange plays with three number eights, that's great until you lose the ball, isn't it? And teams attack us and you've got no first line of defence. I've written down here again, Rodri talks about, sorry, people go, oh, you love Rodri. I do. I think Rodri's the best player in world football. I think this guy is an absolute genius that goes under the radar. He talks about being the first to engage. So when the ball is lost in midfield, you don't want Romero or Van de Ven to be the first to engage. You want them taking up their position. You want them making sure that the space to goal isn't there. The Rodri, the Kante, that type of player is the first to engage. That makes the player break in with the ball. He's got something to think about. At the moment... They don't have anything to think about until they get to our centre-backs. So, again, there's loads of coaching manuals out there that talk about being the first to engage. That is what the number six is there to do. Out of possession, the number six protects the back four. In our case, the back two, but he protects the back four, the back three, the back two. When the full-backs go forward, he is there to protect. He is there to add another layer, whether that's in the sixth position or dropping in to make it a three. Now, all of a sudden, that allows Romero to go and cover out wide on the right. Van der Ven to go and cover out wide on the left. And you've got, and you've got a, a DM in that middle, making it a free, making it tougher to break down. The intelligence we talked about in, in possession, but the intelligence out of possession, where to be, when to run, in, when, when to chase, when to sit. Yeah, the reading of situations. These players are so intelligent reading the situations, sniffing out the danger. And we don't have that. We don't have anyone in our team with that kind of, that nose for sniffing out danger. Lots of, got, I'm not saying they're all bad players in our midfield, but they're all a bit the same and none of them really sniff out that danger. The way a Moussa Dembele did or Wan Yama did, right? The way these number six sniff it out. Yeah? Allows, the, the number six out of possession allows the, the other players to go forward. It allows them to go forward with the freedom to know that the back four is not completely exposed. And Tottenham, I'll talk about this now, Tottenham more than any other team I've ever seen, When you, uh, maybe other than Pep's team that had Alba and, and Danny Alves, but that was such a great team of some of the best players that ever lived. When we have a doggy up there, Poro up there, this gap in here behind them, this gap in here is where all the pundits now are saying we're easy to get at. Every team we play, focus down that, that path. Now imagine you've got a number six that drops into the middle. It now allows less space down the side because Van der Ven can go out and cover on the left. Romero can go out and cover on the right. Or Dragusin, whoever's playing. But at the moment, they can't do that because if they go and cover the right on the left, there's no one in the middle because we don't have a defensive-minded midfielder. We don't have the guy that sniffs out the danger. Look, we could talk about this all day long and people will turn around and go, oh, you're not a coach. You're not. Listen, I've done my coaching badges and stuff, but this isn't what this is about. This is about football has evolved. Football isn't 4-4-2 anymore. Football needs that when teams are on a transition, how do you snuff that out? And for me, if the best teams in the world, like Madrid, snuff it out, and Man City snuff it out, and Bayern snuff it out, and Arsenal and whoever, right? If all of these teams have a guy that does that, Frankie de Jong at Barcelona isn't a DM, always, always available to help the back four. Spurs don't have that. And if all of these top quality sides don't uh, have it, how can we not have it? How can we think we're, we're, the, we're the outlier, we're the difference? It just doesn't work for me. You look at Leverkusen. 
They were superb last year. Again, Xhaka, not your out-and-out number six, but Xhaka was constantly going to pick up that ball from the back three. Him and Andrik had a really good dynamic in that midfield too, where Andrik was a little bit more of, yeah, I'll get on the ball and go forward. Xhaka was a bit more of a, let me dictate, let me get on the ball, let me start movements. You've got to have these players in your team. And Spurs don't. And, and this is the true worry that I see we're linked with yet more number eights, but we don't seem to want that position. And that, for me, ultimately, guys, is why I think there's going to be a downfall for Tottenham. So people can take this video as negative or they ask for in-depth analysis. I'm giving it now. This is why I don't think we will compete with the big clubs until we get that sorted. Yes, forwards and wide men will get you more goals. But we will continue to we will continue to concede more goals than all the other teams in the top three. Yeah, if we don't sort out the two inverted full backs, it should be one with one coming in to make a back three. So then you've got a back three plus the DM dropping in. You've now got a back four to defend the transitions and the counterattacks. Right. But we don't do it. So for me, this is my concern. I'll put this out there now. I could be very wrong. In a, in a year or so, Spurs could win the league and I'm massively wrong. What I've seen, I don't think other teams are worried by us. From what I've seen, lots of pundits, lots of uh, football commentators now are starting to notice how easy we are to get behind. Scott Minto and Cascarino, you can say what you want about them. They did a good piece both on TalkSport on Sunday, talking about that they like Ange, but the tactics leave us really exposed. And unless you've got the best players in the world... You can't negate those really open, the gaping holes in the Tottenham midfield and defence. So let me know what you think. And a couple of other players I've mentioned. If you look in the Premier League in the last 15 or so years, no club has won a competition without this type of player. Chelsea with Matic. City with Rodri. City with Fernandinho. Liverpool with a Fabinho. City, uh, uh, Chelsea and Leicester City with Kante, Bayern Munich with a Thiago Alcantara or a Lam, yeah, or a Kimmich, right? Um, Barcelona have had their Busquets, the Frankie de Jongs. Teams are not winning leagues and winning big trophies without this type of player in their team. So I get it. People can just say, oh, I, you know more than and You think you know more than that? I don't. I'm just looking at facts. I'm looking at evidence. This is what it needs. I'll leave it there. I just thought it would be a good piece on, on, on needing a number six and why I think it's so important. Let's look back at this after the first 10, 20, 30 games of the Premier League. Let's see how right or wrong this, this sort of number six talk is because I think it's fundamental. Take care, everyone. Let me know your thoughts. Let's have a football chat, by the way. Try, I love those people that come back and talk football. And Let me know what you think. And the last thing I'll say is, no, Benton Core is not a number six. No, Basuma is not a number six, no matter how much Ange wants to try it. No, Saar is not a number six. OK, let's stop that now. And Archie Gray is just not ready to be a number six. So let's stop doing that because I know what people are like. Take care. Let me know. And guys and girls, we're five subscribers away from 13,000. Five of you watching this video can smash that subscribe button. Take care, everyone. And as always, come on, you Spurs.